After Minnesota recently revealed its COVID-19 vaccine priority groups, some of the medically vulnerable found themselves left out. A sense of panic set in. Pam Herbstritz says Minnesota's vaccine connector indicated that her 17-year-old daughter Amber, who suffers from spastic quadriplegia, a severe form of cerebral palsy, would have to wait months for a shot. Months to us, that could be life or death. She does not have the ability to produce a cough a very strong one on her own. So if she gets a cold, um, she ends up being on steroids through a nebulizer. A year and a half ago, she, pre-COVID, she was in the hospital on a vet. I knew that if she were to get COVID, it would possibly kill her. Pam says Amber's doctors agreed, so they spent the year completely locked down, even separated from her father. But we have to go to doctor's appointments. And with the new variants out there, it's terrifying. I knew that I needed to do something about it and get her one quicker. It took nearly four weeks calling pharmacies across the country until a thrifty white in North Dakota gave her the answer she'd been praying for. They said, we would be happy to vaccinate your daughter. And I just broke down crying to them on the phone because it was it was almost like a miracle at that point. Within days, they were driving three hours to Wapaton and Amber finally got her first dose Bonk. because North Dakota had begun allowing persons with two or more high risk medical conditions regardless of age. They were so genuinely empathetic to our situation and they welcomed us. But they were far from the only Minnesotans and on Monday, Thrifty White changed its policy saying only North Dakota residents could sign up there. It felt like a lifeline, or one lifeline that we had. It felt like it was severed. According to Thrifty White, North Dakota was concerned that it would throw off its federal vaccine allocation. If someone has an appointment, we're not turning them away. We don't want to cause drama. You know, if they had an appointment, we want to make sure we take care of them and help them out. But at the same time, we also want to be respectful of what North Dakota's strategy is. And one of the hardest pieces to manage is right now, every state kind of has their own strategy that they're following. And that's why Pam helped start the Vaccinate the Vulnerable Minnesota Facebook group to push the state to rethink its strategy. And get some doctors involved. They know who their complex patients are. They know the ones that are highest at risk because there's a lot of us being left behind. And it appears MDH is listening. This afternoon, it released new vaccine guidance that adds people with rare conditions that put them at higher risk to the next priority group. We're intending to give some uh, some flexibility there for, uh, for clinicians to work with their patients to, to make those decisions. Absolutely a step in the right direction. Um, I feel like we are being heard and it's a lot better than where we were. Now, as you could tell right there, Pam considers herself cautiously optimistic tonight. This came down after our first interview. We called her back to tell her that news. So she said she's hopeful that other families aren't going to have to make this kind of a trip, if they even can, of course. But right now, they're still trying to understand exactly how much leeway doctors will have and what qualifies as a rare condition and where all of this really falls, Jenna. Well, Kent, regardless with North Dakota now seemingly pretty much closed to this option, are Minnesotans just out of options outside the state? Not entirely, and it's worth pointing out that if you have a secondary residence or work or have a doctor in North Dakota, maybe if you go to school there, you can still sign up there. You just can't be like she was from out of state with no ties. And I've heard that there's other states that are still in other pharmacy chains that are letting people in. There's some talk about it in South Dakota, perhaps, uh, but it all changes very quickly. And frankly, a lot of the families that are doing it, they don't want to talk about it because they don't want these options to go away. Yeah, that's understandable. Thanks, Kent, so much.